So let's do a quick run through of how you could handle this Word document by translating the underlying XML file to get at the content that's contained in these tables in Microsoft Word. So in this example, which is an example of what could be a much larger file, I want to translate the source text that's in the second column of each table in this Word file. And I want to put the translation into the third column of each table. So I want to pick this one and put the translation in here. So I've put one translation in the file already just so that I've got some guidance and to make sure that I've, I've done, done things correctly. Um, but that's essentially what I need to do to take the source here and put it into target. The exception to that is where the third column is gray like this. So where it's gray, I do not want to extract this at all. So that's a little bit of added complexity. And I want to try and automate that in some way. So I close that and what I'm going to do is unzip this file because the docx is essentially a zip file. I could add a .zip on the end and open it up and co copy the files that way. But I, what I'm going to do is just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to create a folder. We'll call it unzipped like that. So the inside of this unzipped folder is over here on the right. Here's my cells and I'm going to unzip the contents of this um, docx file, which is just a zip file into the right. So I'm just going to press Shift F5 on, on my little program here, which puts the content over in here. And inside this Word folder, there's a document.xml, which if I copy it over to here and put it back over here on the left. So here I've got it over here. If I open that in a text editor, this file, this very messy file, so if I just pretty print it so you can see it. Oh, where's my mouse gone? There we go. So you can pretty print it. This file contains all of this information I need to be translating. So for example, you can see there's the one translated cell that we had. There's the English version of it and somewhere along here the name. This is the bit that was in the first column in that in that table cell. So all of the content of this file, the translatable content of this file is contained in this document.xml. So what I've done is in Trotter Studio, I've created a project template, which I've called Word Special. And if I edit that and go up to the file types, here's my multilingual XML file type from the App Store. And in the language mapping, I've created some fairly complicated rules, I'm afraid. Um, but basically what they do is the language's root path up here is going to look into the document body table TR, I can't remember what TR stands for, TR um, element, and then the table cell, the paragraph, whatever the R stands for in the text. Um, the languages are all in this bit here, so the second column, the third column of the table cell, and they sit at the end of this. This little bit that I've added at the end here, this predicate, this is just saying that look at all of these, but only if the content of the third column of the table cell does not contain a fill color that matches this code A6, 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 which is essentially the code for the Word document that I've got. Your document, or the one in the, the post, won't necessarily be the same color as that. So if you do use this, don't use this color. Make sure you use the one that's in your XML file. So for example, if I come back to here and I open up this XML file that I've got, and I'll just do a search for, probably I think fill was the word. Gosh, my mouse is all over the place today, fill. There we go, fill. So the fill of that particular particular cell there is A6, 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 A6. So you need to check and see what color is used in your file. I know that this is the um, attribute that's used because I created a very small example for myself to try and understand it and make sure I knew what was what in the file. Um, because colors are used all or are used all over the place but that was the one for me so that's what i'm using so once i've got my rules there i don't need to worry about anything else because this file is a very simple file aside from the the exercise of trying to identify where everything is so i'm going to click on ok and i'm going to create a new project i'm going to use that project template i created the word special so that's going to 
put those files where I want them, which I don't want them there. I want to put them in, I guess, testing. There we go. Um, Alan Twig, put it. Projects. So I'll put the project in here. So that's in your. It's in your folder. Uh, we'll give it a new name here, and I'll call it my um, Word Table Project, just so it's got a unique unique name. And then I'm going to take that XML file here and drop it into my project. It's recognized it as a translatable file using the, the multilingual XML file type, so my rules must make sense, which is important. And I'm just going to click and finish this point. The reason I'm going to click finish is because the only other thing I've got in there is my batch tasks. And my batch tasks, I'm using a custom task. Um, oh, I'm missing a bit. Convert to translated format, copy to target languages. Let me just edit that because I did actually edit that. Um, so quick multilingual. I want to import multilingual translations. I want that on the end. Okay. Close. I can do this because I've got the uh, professional version. You won't be able to do that. So you'll just have to create your project and then you can import them in afterwards, which is easy enough to do. Um, I'm just doing it so it's fairly quick. So I removed that when I was doing something else um, before and I forgot to put it back. So I'll finish on that point. So you can see my project was created very quickly because it was not doing any pre-translation or anything like that. It's very light. I open up the project, open up the XML, and there's my file. And it's just extracted the information I wanted it to pull out. So it hasn't taken the additional problem description that had the gray cell in the third column. It's only taken out the stuff that I actually need to translate. And it's imported the content that was already translated, which is reassuring for me. So I'm going to go to my project settings now. And I'm just going to use language with a cloud provider. OK. OK. Uh, so I'm just using machine translation, uh, using an app from the App Store for that. I'll just accept that. Accept that one as well. Bring in a couple more from the machine translation engine. And there's my file translated. Just to show you the preview, the only thing the preview tells me or shows me, so I click on this, is it gives me some idea of what I'm translating. So this will move and preview on what I'm actually translating. And it'll show me show me where it sits within the file. I can do that for the source or the source or the target, um, which, which is quite nice. So that's all the preview is going to give me. I cannot preview the Word document and see the Word document in there because I'm really handling XML now, not the Word document, in case anybody asks that question. So I'm going to close that file, save the changes. And then I'm going to go to my batch tasks and I'm going to generate multilingual translations, which is the batch task that will be installed when you install this, this um, app. And I'm just going to finish at that point. There's no settings on there to apply at all. And then I can just explore the containing folder. And in there you'll see, if I go up a level, I now have a multilingual folder in my project files. So if I go to there, and just copy the path. This is my document XML, which is what I've just saved. I come back to here just so I can get it all correct. Um, and I go to there. There's my document XML. And I'm going to replace this one in the in my unzip word file with the one I've just translated. You can see it's bigger, so it contains more content than the other one. So I'll just copy it over and say overwrite it. So now it's overwritten. And then what I'm going to do is I'll just go up a couple of levels. That's too far down. One to unzip. Select all of this content, and I'm going to zip the file back up again. So I'll, I'll zip it. So now it's got a zip extension. And if I rename that, I could call it whatever I wanted to call it. So what, what was it called before? Let me just go and have a look. It was just called cells.docx. So I'm going to rename that as cells. Translated.docx. So now it looks like a word file. I spelt it wrong, but not to worry. And if I double click it, all being well, it should open up. 
and my file should be completely translated with things in the right place and there we go so we can see I've got it source target source target source target source target these two are source target and I have not done anything with this one because it was gray perfect so that's how I could handle that particular file using the multilingual XML file type genius app from the App Store built by the RWS App Store team so thank you very much Patrick Hartnett um, who is a developer in the team who built this this particular plugin